lads and ladies, why don't I say that? Uh, today I will be recording my next audiobook. Because I haven't recorded it in so long. You know, you see this thing down here? That's the audiobook. I haven't recorded it in so long. I should probably be calmer in case if someone is just casually listening to this. And they just want to go to bed. And they're like, I need to listen to something before bed. Or, I, I don't know, whatever, whatever coincidence or situation. Anyway, I am going to be reading now because I haven't done this in so long. And I was like, you know what? I should probably do this. So, as of now, I shall start reading. Chapter 3. Oh, it's been so long. Excuse me if I have to like look at it a little bit. Because I've been working on other books and all that kind of stuff. And I finished this book like... About a year ago now. It's been like a year almost since I finished this one. Um, chapter 3. The three of them arrived at camp. Wait, hold up. <clears throat> okay. The three of them arrived at camp. As they arrived, the sun was above the trees, but not in the center of the sky. Everyone at the camp was now awake. The camp sounded like a small town. Man, I said camp a lot. <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll not interrupt myself if I have... I'm, now I'm telling myself I need to not make edits <laughs> as hard as that's going to be. i um, not going to make any edits. Uh, just know that I have gotten better at writing since this. <laughs> this is the first book I ever finished. And yeah. Okay. One of them was just leaving, axe in hand. He left in search of some good trees to chop. Everyone else was crafting, enchanting, using an anvil, and other things you might see someone do while preparing for a long day in the wilderness. I have some troubling news, Candy stood on top of her tent as she looked at the others. Sparky, our newest member, has informed me that the nearest town has recently de <laughs> was recently depleted of all its citizens. Wow, I actually did the... Oh yeah, that's just because I wasn't a grammar Nazi. Uh, I mean, but turned out right. Okay, in the end. Oh, anyway, anyway, I, I wouldn't, uh... Okay, he overheard that they had been teleported somewhere underground, possibly even bedrock level. I want everyone to help search for those for these citizens. Not only is it the right thing to do, but a town's entire population of citizens could easily help with any need. If we help them, they will certainly help us. Several cheered in agreement after Candy said that. Immediately, everyone began preparing pickaxes, armor, foods, torches, TNT, water, and other things they needed for the biggest mining trip of their lives. Sparks Brine was given some scrap armor, weapons, and tools that no one else needed. He was equipped with five wooden wood pickaxes, two stone pickaxes, and one iron pickaxe. Because I'm so good at spelling pickaxe. He was, oh yeah, I forgot, I, I used Grammarly, and it's like the other English kind of version, so I it's always like, X is spelled wrong, but you know. Anyway, he, he was also given some flint and steel, a stack of torches, and 30 pork chops. Sparks Brine was given an iron helmet, leather chest plate, golden leggings, and, and leather boots. Almost all of the stuff he was given was close to broken. Everyone got suited and set off towards the village. Once all 27 campers arrived, they began searching for the citizens. Joe Dub, however, had left to cut down a huge tree and would have to catch up later. Most of the campers were players or micros who had run away at some point. The ones you probably need to know about most about were man i'm so good with my character development stuff here okay I know that's uh were candy sparky dj tedder joe dub quiet is violent just because she's a, another minecraft friend <laughs> and jade an oc <laughs> for a book that i still haven't even finished writing i haven't even technically started writing it <laughs> oh, man like, every time I finish a book, I start two brand new ones off of the, um, ideas of the first one. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> it's fun. It just means that I almost never get the actual ones I was originally planning done. 
First they split up to try and find anyone in the small town. Maybe someone had not been teleported away. When they found no one, they began looking around the town for caves or mines. Quiet as Violent Seven strolled to the center of town and began digging straight down with her iron pickaxe. Sparky ran to his cave. Before he had placed his bed in there and made it home, he had closed up the deeper part of the cave with cobblestone so no mobs could sneak up on him. He ran into the familiar cave and broke through the cobblestone. He didn't see anyone, so he slowly crept deeper into the cave, leaving safety of the leaving the safety of the torchlight. He drew his sword and kept it close to him as he walked into the pitch-black darkness of the cave. Though Sparky had lived in a cave, he never once ex explored the dark passages before. He remembered t the torches he had been given. As he, as he remembered this, Sparky pulled out one and held it in, in his unoccupied hand. The better. Now he could see the stone around him. Sparky had never explored that part of the cave. So much of it was untouched. He had walked deeper in the cave. Spar oh, wait. As he walked deeper in the cave, Sparks Brain found some iron ore. Nice! Sparky then gathered the ore and put it in a furnace he had been given. It was a bit he, he was a bit clumsy with the pickaxe, but he soon got, got used to the swinging motion after he broke the fourth block. After that, they were pretty easy to break. Now Sparky had enough iron to make a chest plate and use the extra to repair his helmet. Everything was going pretty well for Sparky on his first mining trip. In the nether. Now, let me try to continue what I remember doing with trying to do impersonations of Hero Brian. <laughs> Hero Brian. <laughs> Where is Sparks Prime? <laughs> okay, I won't be. Uh. <laughs> Where is Sparks Prime? And what happened to Flash Sparkatron? Hero Brian asked anxiously. <laughs> Neon's friends bowed before their mo their master motionless. None of them wanted to answer. I asked you already, and I want an answer. Where are they? The nine of them looked at each other, hoping someone else would talk. Finally, the oldest of them answered. We had a spark spine in our grasp. We were just entering the nether when a player with great speed attacked us. We do not know what happened to Neon. We were too preoccupied with the player. We retreated, thinking he was among us. We think he is still in the overworld. Of course he is. Since he, is, since he has not returned, this can only mean two things. Either he is dead, which is unlikely, or perhaps he has continued his mission. Unlike all of you, Flash Sparkatron is not a coward. He has probably killed Sparks Prime by now and is trying to find the nether portal to report his success. Hero Brian was smiling with that thought in his head. Since you are too scared to fight a simple player like the one who saved Sparks Brian, I will go myself and congratulate Flash Sparkatron for his victory. Moments after he said this, he shined like an enchanted sword and vanished. The, the warriors then st I don't know if I t took off my glasses. <laughs> glasses cleaning moment. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Way to ruin the moment, Candy. Yeah, thank you. Um, I will go myself and go right. Uh, after he said this, he shined like an enchanted sword and he vanished. <laughs> the warriors then stood up and walked away, grumbling under their breath. In the overworld. I like how my time skips were just like, in the overworld. <laughs> Where is Sparky? Candy asked the others. Probably somewhere in the, in the end, telling the Ender King we, where, where we are. DJ grumbled. He pr he would probably never trust Sparks, Brian. Oh. And poor me was like, how to write? <laughs> there is no Ender King, DJ. How about you go in the direction we saw him running last and find him? He might be in a cave or something. Basically, just make sure he doesn't get hurt. I have to make sure Quiet as Violent doesn't fall into any lava. 
Then, both Candy and DJ ran in separate directions, leaving everyone else to explore other caves and mine about. Did I skip the part where Silent just dug deep straight down? I don't think I did, but I don't remember reading that part. Quiet as Violet dug straight down like a noob. <laughs> um, okay. DJ didn't want to even be close to Sparky, but he decided to be there in case. That's not how you spell in case. Okay, nice. In case he actually was a spy. DJ followed Sparky's tracks to the old cave where he eventually found Sparky crafting a new chest plate. Hello, DJ! Can he tell you to babysit me? Well, at least I won't have to worry about the mobs. DJ felt even more suspicious. How did he know Candy sent me? Can he read my mind? If so, we're all in big trouble. DJ thought in his uh, DJ thought this as Sparks Brian finished for preparing his helmet. Let's save some citizens! Both of them were secretly afraid of each other, and didn't want the other to know. And both of them were more worried about each other than the mobs. They both ventured deeper into the cave. Sparks Brian's repaired helmet and new chest plate helped boost his courage. DJ had a full set of iron enchanted armor. However, he walked behind Sparky. He didn't want Sparks Brian to turn on him. Sparky felt a little uneasy. He started to worry that DJ was planning to attack him from behind. <laughs> okay. When he wasn't expecting it. So Sparky walked behind besides DJ. The rest of their silent standoff was then just awkwardly walking side by side, staring at each other. This tension vanished when the small cave tunnel grew wider and taller. It grew wider and wider until it opened into a huge cave. In the darkness, the other side could not be seen. Even the roof or any of the, of the other walls couldn't be seen. DJ suggested to Sparky, I say we walk... <laughs> I got a... a resemble to... Uh, DJ! Yeah, DJ! <laughs> what am I doing? I say we walk alongside the wall so we don't get lost. Both of them let. <laughs> wait. Both of them held torches and. Yeah. Wait, wait. Both of them held out torches in one hand and swords in the other. That's not part of the thing. Okay. I told myself I wouldn't edit this. Oh my gosh. Okay. No more editing. Zip the lips. I mean, you can't zip the lips because I'm reading this, but. <laughs> anyway. They followed the wall to their left into the vast room. As they followed along the wall, they noticed it was no longer normal cave stone, but a mix of stone bricks and cobblestone. <gasps> oh, no! You think this is where the citizens have been teleported? Sparky asked after, after a long time of uncomfortable silence. I don't know. I haven't seen this place before. More uncomfortable silence filled the darkness. The wall they had been following turned right, then left, then right again. Is this some kind of maze? Sparks Brian couldn't keep himself from asking. Would you stop asking me? I know just as much as you do. DJ didn't like not knowing either. Both of them continued along the winding wall. It was a maze. And it was the biggest maze that in that world, too. Uh... Excuse me. As the two of them passed another corner, they ran into a huge party. It was as if they were planning a, I mean, a, 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 a huge zombie party. <laughs> Excuse me. It was as if they were planning an ambush. Once the zombies entered the torchlight, Sparky and DJ prepared for a fight. Sparks Brian had never won a fight before, so when he swung his sword around and actually killed one, he was ecstatic. I spelled it, but okay. I got one! DJ! Did you see it? <laughs> yeah, but I'm kinda busy. DJ was fighting three at the same time. Don't forget to use your hips. That'll give you more power. Your arms might be strong, but combined with your core, you have even more power. 
Sparky used this advice in an incoming zombie. It dropped dead even quicker. Wow! Guess what? Karate advice helps. Wow! <laughs> wow! Sparky was glad he had someone to teach him how to fight. DJ thought to himself, Such a noob. How did I even consider him a threat? DJ swung a few zombies down as he thought to that to himself. Don't forget, uh, don't forget your balance. You don't want to be knocked over, do you? Spread your legs apart so you don't fall over easily. Make sure you don't lean too far forwards or backwards. Sparky positioned himself right before a zombie hit him on the back. His legs caught him from falling, and he swung around immediately and si and sliced the zombie in half. Whoa, brutal! <laughs> Sparky began swinging into the horde of zombies, his torchlight separating from DJ's as he swung his sword around with the ferocity of a honey badger. <laughs> That's funny. The zombies swung their fists at him. He swung his sword back at them. The fight seemed to be endless. Suddenly, Sparky noticed his health. It was now lower than half percent. At this realization, Sparky looked for DJ's firelight. Where is he? Spark, why would you say that out loud? Sparky began to panic. Sparks Brian have had moved away from the only person there was to help. There, there, who, the only person there who could help, who could help. Yeah, I've got that right. Who could help him? He would have to fight this entire horde by himself, and he was already losing. The zombies were coming at him from every angle. They didn't take turns like Neon and his friends had. Sparky swung harder and harder. He didn't care if his arms were starting to hurt. He had to survive. Twang. 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 twang, twang, twang. <laughs> Arrows from the darkness shot a few zombies. The mobs who had been hit dropped dead. Sparky didn't even care about who was shooting the arrows. He dug into his pockets and pulled out some pork chops. One by one, Sparks Brian gorged those slices of meat down until he was no longer hungry. While he was stuffing his face with food, arrows kept raining from the top of the maze. Slowly, he grew stronger as his health returned to normal. Sparky began swinging his sword once again. The arrows began targeting zombies in a line. Sparky followed the line of flashing red zombies until he saw DJ's torchlight and ran towards it. This time, he got to save DJ. Wow. The soldier was having the same trouble as Sparky had just gotten out of. He was running low on health and was overwhelmed by the continuous hordes of zombies. Sparky jumped in and swung his sword out at the ones closest to DJ. Then he began attacking the others. This gave DJ enough time to eat and heal up. We should run. Keep along the same wall. But but hurry past the horde. Even DJ knew he couldn't take them all on forever. Together they ran. They sprinted as fast as they could through the horde of zombies. They defended each other's backs as if they had they had fought together for years. The horde grew thicker and thicker. They began crawling over the zombies. They began walking and even running on, on the zombies. Now they had to make sure they didn't fall into any gaps. Sparky slipped and was welcomed with tons of punches from the moaning monsters. DJ reached in and pulled Sparky up. Standing on the horde was like standing on a pup. On a pudding, on a pudding, on, <laughs> oh my gosh, on pudding that could hit you. Nice. They had to keep moving. Some Sometimes a zombie or two would stand on the others and chase them, but that was easy to handle compared to the very floor they were running on. Vines! DJ pointed to some vines that strung down from the darkness. DJ jumped and barely grabbed the edge of the vines. He climbed up a little, then held his hand out to Sparky, who was having trouble standing still on the green floor of doom. Sparky jumped as well and grabbed DJ's outstretched hand. DJ pulled Sparky up and both of them climbed up on the vines. They had to put their torches away so they couldn't see a thing as they climbed up the aging vines. After a bit of climbing, the vines ended, revealing a wall, re revealing the wall's top. DJ pulled out a torch and placed it. As soon as he got up, the wall they were on was was four blocks thick. 
both climbed up on top. Their arms and legs were sore to the bone. After they ate a bit, the two of them fell asleep. No bed, on a wall, surrounded by a horde of zombies, on a maze, in a gigantic cave. Both DJ and Sparks Brian fell asleep faster than you could say, I'm tired. And that's it for chapter 3. Stay tuned for chapter 4, which I will probably re be recording right after this. See ya!